Hey guys, welcome back to Dude We Can Fix It. Today I'm going to be replacing some seals and bushings on a hydraulic ram. It's for the power steering on my tractor, but this is applicable to many different styles of hydraulic rams. This is the kit that I will be installing today. The most unique tool that you may need for this job is a spanner wrench to remove the cap if you have an inside threaded cap at the end of your ram. And also I have this style spanner wrench as well, which I can hook up to a half inch ratchet. This gives me a lot more torque for breaking the cap loose. And then make sure you have some picks to take out the O-rings. Other than that, all you'll need is probably a few sockets and regular tools that you should already have. All right guys, so here's my tractor. It's an old Massey Ferguson 20F Industrial. What we're going to work on today is this power steering ram. It's just a hydraulic ram. Same concept as this big guy here, just a little bit smaller. This one has twin rams, one on each side for the power steering. And this one is leaking very badly. So when it's running, you can see that there's a, a bushing right in here and it is completely wore out. So the first thing that we're going to do is remove this cotter pin. I'm gonna break off the legs on this one to make this a bit easier. Break off one leg anyhow. We'll need the appropriately sized socket. This one's a 24. Take this loose. Once you have that off, flip it upside down and thread it back on. And before you get flush with the top of the bolt, stop. Now you'll need a hammer to tap it down. There we go. Now we can finish removing our castle nut and we can pull this out. Now we can rotate this around to where we can access it. And you see that there's a hole here and there's a hole here. But those holes are to remove this cap. This is an inside threaded cap. If it was on the outside, you might would be able to grab it with some large channel locks or such. But this one will require the use of our spanner wrench. So we'll set the prongs of this spanner wrench into these holes. And then we'll use our ratchet to loosen it. <clears throat> There we go. Now that we've broken it, I'll use this other spanner wrench to just unthread the cap. All right, we've made it to the end of the threads. Now we can just pull that out. And we'll step back a little bit. And we can pull this entire ram out of here. Pull the ram out of the cylinder. There we go. So the next thing that we need to do is remove the nut from the end of this ram. Sometimes it helps to put this end in a vise. I'm going to attempt using just an impact. Now that that nut is off, slide this part out. We see that it has some sort of o-ring there. Also, looks like there should maybe be one on the inside. We'll slide this entire section out. We'll set the ram off to the side. Now we'll open up our new steering cylinder seal kit and lay out all of our parts. So we'll start with this one. Using your pick, we need to pry out this ring here. There we are. Compare that to the new one. Very nice. Now we'll try to slide the new one in place. There we go. New seal is in place. Now we'll pop out the O-ring on the inside of here. We'll match that up to the one from our kit. Now we will install it. There we go, our new O-ring is in there. It is seated properly, so this piece is done. Next, we have the cap. It has a large O-ring on the outside. We'll match that up with the one from the kit and we'll install it. Next, we have this bushing scraper here that we can see a big chunk of it is missing on this side. So we'll pull this out. I'm going to finish cleaning this up with a scrub brush and some paint thinner. Got most of this seal out. I'll have to uh, continue cleaning up a little bit more, but I want to go ahead and get this bushing out from in here. All 
All right, so I'm going to clean this up a little more in my parts washer, and then we will reassemble all the new seals and bushings and scrapers. So now to smooth out these surfaces that I scratched up with the knife, probably see right in there, I'll be using a dog toenail sander. That looks much better. So now I'll clean this up to get all the sand and metal shavings out of there and we'll be ready for the reinstallation. All right, so I went ahead and poured some fresh oil, uh, any motor oil, transmission fluid, anything you have that's clean, we'll do a fine job on here. And the first thing for starting this is I'm going to put the new packing in. I'm going to have this grooved section facing down. So that would be towards this side and not towards the outside of the cap. And the old one came with this O-ring in it, but the new kit did not. So I'm going to try to put this O-ring back in there, but if it proves to be rather difficult, then I'm just not going to worry about it. Cause like I said, the new kit didn't come with one, so it probably doesn't need it. Actually, I'm probably just not even gonna worry about that O-ring. So I'll fold this in here, try to set it in this groove, press it up from the bottom. Pair of tiny needle nose should come in pretty handy here. There it is. That packing is in place. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the wiper. Now this is like a metal crimp style seal here. Uh, you want this rubber wiper section to be pointing out of the cap. So, and also make sure it's well lubed. I just dipped this in some oil. Try to get this started in there nice and flat. I'll tap it down a little bit with rubber mallet. We don't want to get too crazy with that because we need to keep this seal here in good shape. But we do need to press this the rest of the way down to where it meets that metal. So we use a small flathead and a hammer. We'll go around the outside tapping. Press that down as far as I can without a special tool. It's not all the way down to that middle lip, but this is in there very well, and I don't think it's going to come out or give me a problem. So I took this off earlier while I was cleaning. I'll go ahead and reinstall this now. So now we have a new O-ring, a new wiper, and a new packing on the inside. That's ready to be reinstalled. This also has a new O-ring on the inside, and a new I guess that's some sort of like cork or something uh, seal here. So I've oiled all this up a little bit with some transmission fluid. Now I'll go ahead and wipe the ram and slide this on. I just oiled this up a little bit more to ease the reinstallation. All right, so now we can go ahead and slide this up. We'll set our bottom piece in position and we will screw on our nut. Once again, if you don't have an impact to tighten this up, put this section in a vise and tighten that up real good with a socket or a ratchet. Now we are ready for reinstallation. Go ahead and slide this back into the housing. Don't force it, just wiggle it until it goes in. Let's try to get that a little farther in. There we go. Now we can thread on the cap. Everything is much tighter now with the new seals in place. I'll go ahead and skip over to the banner wrench to thread this in. I'll use my other spanner wrench to torque it down. Now we'll bring it back over here and thread it up through this hole. Reinstall the castle nut. So if you're having trouble getting that nut back on, you can look on the inside and sometimes the threads will be a little messed up. If the threads are messed up on here, you can take a small file like this and clean up any portions that are not. So you can take a small file like this and clean up stuff that's not in good shape. 
However, if the threads on the inside of here are messed up, you would need a tap and die kit in order to chase those threads. I have a tap and die kit, but I don't have anything that large. So, another thing we can do is we can take this grease boot off and we can use some channel locks. I'll cover it with a rag so that I won't mess up this stud. We'll clamp it on here to hold this stud in place. Next, we'll thread the nut upside down and that's the point where it jams up. We'll put our socket on there. We'll tighten it by hand. It is also good to apply a little bit of lubrication on this. We'll go till it stops. Then we can hold the stud and tighten this by hand. Until we get past the part that it's hard to uh, thread on. And we can go ahead and tighten this all the way down. As soon as it gets snug, go ahead and back it off. There we go, came off nice and easy. Now we have chased the threads with the stud. So we'll remove our vice grips, put our grease boot back on, and continue reinstalling the ramp. Now we can tighten down on this nut. I believe at this point the entire stud is turning, but get it as tight as you can. Now we will put a new cotter pin in. All right, now we have our new cotter pin ready to go. Slide that through. Being that the castle nut is so far below the cotter pin, I went ahead and did the cotter pin in a more vertical direction, cut one end and pried it down in between these two uh, sections of the castle nut. That way this nut will not spin freely of the cotter. That will hold that assembly together. At this point you can go ahead and locate your power steering reservoir or if you're doing hydraulics, your hydraulic reservoir. Pull your plug and refill it to the correct level. This tractor calls for hydraulic fluid to run the power steering. However, I'm going to be using full synthetic automatic transmission fluid instead. Now that the reservoir is full, I'll start the tractor up and I'll take pressure off of the front tires. That way I can turn left to right without binding up the power steering system and bleed out all the air. See that our power steering is working correctly and our new wiper packing and o-rings have stopped the leak from right here so my power steering is now nice and tight I don't leak any more fluid from that location um, and after my third refill and moving the tires left to right max to max uh, my fluid level stayed full it was a little bubbly so i'm going to let this sit for a few hours to let the aeration out of the oil that's inside of the reservoir and it's good to go so as you can see i do have a massive leak from the packing on this ram but stay tuned to our channel if you want to learn how to repack the lift ram bushings in here and also the bucket tilt packings and wipers in here so thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like our channel and our content, please subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned for more videos like this. And always, dude, we can fix it.